Welcome back to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today is a Patreon request from Mr. Mad Mothy, who wanted to see a collectible system that shows on a menu. And so with that said, let's get started. All right, so I've linked this sample project on my samples pack number one. It's under pause menu collectibles. And remember that Patrons get this for free. And so with that said, let's jump into the project. So I have just a one scene here. It's of a guy, it's on top down. And you just go and you collect these things that are supposed to be collectible throughout the game. So as you play test, you can just press space up on them and you get them. You can then press escape to bring up the menu. Now this would be your normal menu, whatever you would want in here. But the two things that you would have is a return to a game, you know, like continue and then a view collectibles tab. So the view collectibles would bring up another menu. And then this would show the collectibles that you've gotten throughout your game. And you can return to the main menu and then you can return back to the game or however you want to do it. So let's get into how I was doing this. So the bulk of the work is in the menu scene where I have a pause menu main and then a pause menu collectible. Now you will notice that I have objects, background objects in both of them. And that is so one will overlay the other one. And so the menu main has a background and then the menu collectible has the same background, but it does have a background. And so with that, then you have your main menu input and then your main collectible input. And how I went about this, and then obviously a HUD menu caller. So how I went about this is, obviously you have your collectibles. Now I did them all in one, and then on the scene here, I would select them and then I would say what type this is. So I would say this is a purple, this is a wisp, and then that's how that would work. And then they would just simply, when you selected them, they would add to their corresponding variable right here. But in the menu caller, when I pause, I do want to show this. So this is my new way of pausing the game and it's with disable layer other than layer one. So disable layer motion. This is going to prevent you from bugs where certain movements of bullet types do not do, or continue to move if you only use the change game speed. So normally, or what was very common was to use change game speed to zero, no limit, and then you would do objects and you would do all objects. So this just, it, it, it works for the most part, but there are certain motions, again, mostly with bullet behaviors and other movement type behaviors, where this will not catch it and it will not stop. It will not pause basically. So I don't use this anymore. I go with a disable layer motion and I have, I select layer one and then I disable all other layers that are not associated with it. And so what that means is that each of my scenes now have a far left layer. This is layer one that nothing really goes on it. I call it HUD. You can call it menu pauser or you could call it whatever, but this is gonna allow, this is gonna make it to where it doesn't matter how many layers you have in the scene, it's gonna pause all of them. And so that's what's important. So on every scene, in order for this to work, if you're using this method, you have to create a far left layer that has nothing on it, and then you're going to be able to pause and everything just fine. So that is how I pause the game now. Then I show the, the menu obviously, and then, uh, this link, it's it's dotted, but it's white. And for me, this just means that I'm going to be executing action into this. So I don't need to worry about a link, actually. I could just delete it if I wanted something like that. And then the unpause, you're going to enable layer motion. Again, layer one, enable all unselected layers. But it would be nice if it just had an all, then we wouldn't have to have that extra layer. But since we have to actually select a layer, we can't do not set. We have to select a layer. So just select the layer and then then let it go. And I guess it doesn't have, well, actually it does need to be the far left because that way you know for sure that it's that layer. So yeah, I would, I would recommend that it is the most far layer or far left layer. So then now when you call the menu, we have the resume game, which does that thing, but now we have a new input method that I use uh, to bring up new screens. And so when you select collectibles and you press A, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show another menu 
on this and it's it's going to show it over it so we're not going to hide this menu yet and what we're going to do though is it's going to be stuck in this action so this this menu is not going to be able to do anything because it's stuck in this action so you are basically overlaying menus but you've kind of hard locked this menu from doing anything so when you show this menu the pause menu collect then this input starts to happen and there's only a return input but when you press the input for it it's then going to execute that old input to return from collectible and so then it's going to execute it to here return to collectible which is going to hide the last menu screen which because i don't have any of these options selected so it's going to just hide the last one and then it's so it's going to hide the collectible menu screen and then it's going to go back to collectibles and that's how you can get that nice and fluid um, view collectibles return back and it's still on view collectibles and so yeah it's a it's a newer input method that i do for menus when you want to overlay uh, menus for different parts of your menu and it makes it really easy because again you're hard locking the input so nothing can really happen on the old menu and then you just have to have make sure that you have a return to this menu that hides the old menu and so yeah it's it's a nice way that you can just you know uh separate your menus a little more have the logic a little less which is always nice if you can get away with having an input system like this it's so much nicer to deal with than having a huge input system that's you know trying to change backgrounds and everything at the same time and so yeah those are the main things and then for the collectibles it's pretty easy those collectibles are actually showing on the background and so you can see that the background of the collectible menu screen it's going to show the these are the um the the values of them so real quick let me just go back to the collectible screen the collectible so you can see that it shows an icon and then it shows the value and then how much is there so for instance you can see that the how much i set on a text resource and then i use a text tag to show the value of the red mushroom now this is how you you show it basically in a text tag and the zero means that it's a common variable and then that's the name of the variable and so this you could change to whatever you want or you could have it be another variable if you wanted to change the max value for whatever reason and then we're showing it on collectible one a connection point and i'll go into this in a minute but first i'll go to the effects and these are where i'm showing the actual icons the red mushroom and again it's using collectible one as well and so you can assume that in the animations under the menu collectible tab you can see that i have all these connection points on where i want that to show so yeah basically in the background i just set my connection points then i go into my effects tab which if you don't have one up by default you got to add it right here hit okay and then it'll pop up then i add these i make sure that they're corresponding and then i added the show text and attached it also to that connection point and then i just adjusted the position of the x just to make them go over a little bit and so yeah that way it just pops up all the information and then when i go back again you know with this one then this input hides that menu and that background's all gone and all the information's gone. Now, I did it this way uh, instead of using a variable, for instance, because you're not going to be able to collect anything while you're in the menu. So this, this value should never change. Um, one caveat with this system is that this does not update. And so, for instance, if it was a situation where for some reason in the menu I could still collect a red mushroom and this value could change, I would be rethinking this and I would be doing it via a variable because this system does update, but this one will not. This text tag does not. So just keep that in mind. But um, yeah, anyway, if there's any questions on this sample, drop them in the comments below, Steam Forums, we'll get you figured out. With that said, I'll see you at the next video.